I want to show you how I removed this account right here from a credit report within 14 days. And I'm going to walk you through the entire process step by step by step. So sit back, relax, grab a pen, get some paper, get something to drink, because we're going to get straight into it. Welcome to the Experian Project. Basically, what we're going to be talking about is what I've done to get this account removed from a credit report, right? Now, as you can see, this happened back on February 1st, 2024, and we got results within February, um, on February 15, 2024. Now, I want to give you a disclaimer. If you know anything about Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, nothing is guaranteed. Even though, even though they have a procedure they must follow, we already know sometimes they don't follow the procedure. And nobody's really holding Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax accountable. Now, some people do hold them accountable, go through the litigation process, but most of the time, you can send letter after letter after letter after letter, and sometimes nothing happens so what i want to do is show you a process which you can do like i said before this is isn't this isn't guaranteed but if i can help you remove some accounts before you go through the process where you go send a letter after letter after letter you know i want to show you this and then go through that process but i believe just listen to me before i go through the five-step process i believe that the litigation process is going to be the best process because now you get the violations from Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, and these debt collectors create a case and then lawyers, you know, sue them. So if you're thinking about that process, you know, just let me know. But most importantly, let me go ahead and show you what we're going to do to get these accounts removed from a credit report. So first things first, um, it's a five step process. And then first, what we want to do is get your report. All right. Now, how do you get your report? Google Experian, Google like a free account with Experian and go ahead and create an account with um, Experian first. Now, after you do that, after you have your free account and you're logged in and you're in the, um, and you can see what you wanna do is just scroll all the way down. What you're gonna see is scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on Help Center right here. As you can see, what you wanna do is just click on Help Center. Now, once you click on Help Center, this is gonna pop up. This screen will pop up, okay? Now you wanna click on File a Dispute. All right, now once you click on File Dispute, click on start new dispute. Okay. Now click on this. Now, next, what you want to do is what you're going to see is all your information. You're going to see potentially negative accounts. You're going to see like personal information and different type of, account, um, different type of tabs. Right. But as you can see on your potentially negative accounts, you want to click on like the first one, cause you're going to be able to click on each one, but just click on the first one. Now, once you click on the first one, this is what's going to pop up. Okay. Now just click on start a dispute. And now once you click on start dispute, now you want to click on this part right here to select the reason. Now, the reason that we're selecting is other reason. All right. A lot of people will teach you or say, select this or this. We're doing other reason. I'm going to explain why. Cause a lot of people say the account's not theirs when you know the account's yours and all you have to do is just a hey, verify that this account belongs to you. But most importantly, what we're doing is something a little bit different because if you ever look at your credit report and a try merge credit, a try merge credit report, which is like from identity IQ and you look at experience, transgene, Equifax, what you're going to see is different um, inaccuracies when it comes to your credit report and according to the law, 15 USC 1681, right? Everything has to be complete and accurate. And if you read 15 USC 1681EB, they're supposed to ensure maximum possible accuracy. All right. So just, you know, you can go hold, you know, you can go read the laws yourself, but most importantly, click on other reason. Now, this is what I put. All right. According to Cushman versus TransUnion 1997, experience is supposed to ensure maximum. Like I said before, maximum possible accuracy. This account violates 15 USC 1681I, 15 USC 1681S-2, 15 USC 1681I5, 15 USC 1681EB, delete. Oh man, I messed up, but you're supposed to say delete account, all right? Now, once, once you put that comment in, now you want to wait for your results, all right? Now, typically, as you can see, you'll get notified of your results. So what you want to do is just wait for your results. OK, now, if the account doesn't get removed from the credit report, OK, if it doesn't get removed from the credit report, now what you want to do is actually go through the process of going 
um, using the law and just going back and forth with the credit bureaus if you don't sign up with my litigation team, all right? But now is what you want to do is go get your report from Identity IQ because I know people are coming from everywhere. So I just want to walk you through the process because if that doesn't work now, this is supposed to work. But like I said earlier, Experience TransUnion Equifax are on their own, whatever, all right? So you want to get your report from Identity IQ. You can go get a dollar trial for seven days, right? And what you're going to see is inconsistent information from your credit report, all right? TransUnion Experience and Equifax, what you're going to see is the link one account, derogatory account, collections, okay? But most importantly, we're not going to dispute first, all right? What you want to do is clean up your personal information. If you actually go and experience, like go back to the website, and what you're going to see is variations of your first name, last name, your address, your work history, your phone number. You probably have a spouse on there. You're going to see a lot of information that's not supposed to be on there that needs to be updated and fixed. And you can dispute some of them on experian.com, but some of them are attached to those negative accounts or attached to positive accounts. And what you want to do is update some of those accounts. I mean, update some of that personal information and get it removed from your credit report, okay? So what you want to do now is go ahead and create a letter and I'll have the letter for you and get your personal information. But what we're doing is you want to get all the addresses that um that are different, that have different variations and put it on here. And you want to create, think about it. If it's messed up on Experian, it's probably messed up on TransUnion Equifax. But if that's the case, what you want to do is create three separate letters, okay? Create three separate letters and send it to Experian TransUnion Equifax. Very important, okay? And make sure you send it certified and add two forms of identification, okay? Now, once you send that certified, just wait. Now, like I said, you could dispute some of them um, online. And then some of them you have to send a letter in. And if they play crazy, call Experian and then just dispute some of those addresses okay and then call transunion and call equifax if like i said if they play crazy but last but not least if none of that works then you want to file a complaint with the cfpb and i'll walk you through that process a little later on but i'm just going to show you what you can do right now to go ahead and remove some of that personal information so you can have just one name one address one phone number one job history on your report okay so after you do that here's what you want to do next now, what you want to do now is create your first letter, all right? You want to send a letter to Experian, to TransUnion, and Equifax. And what you're going to tell them is check the completeness and accuracy. And if it's not complete and accurate, please remove it from my credit report. What you're telling Experian, to TransUnion, and Equifax, if you read the law, all we're doing is asking them to reinvestigate the completeness and accuracy. We're not we're not disputing anything else. We're not saying it's not ours or we're not saying other things, right? We're not saying, oh, update this, update that. We're not doing none of that, all right? What we're doing is according to the law and that's their job to make sure everything is updated. Make sure the open date, date last active, um, the payment history, all that is correct. That is their job. It's not your job to tell them that, all right? So what we wanna do is tell them to reinvestigate these accounts, all right? So the accounts that you wanna put on the letter is all the negative accounts. Every last negative account on your report, I don't care what the status is. If it's negative, if it's hurting your credit report, put it on the letter, all right? Now, what you wanna do is just send that letter in, all right? Certified, add two forms of identification, one to Experian, one to TransUnion, one to Equifax certified, and then wait 35 days very important the reason why you're waiting 35 days is 30 days it takes them 30 days to complete an investigation and it'll probably take them five days to send you the investigation all right that's normally what it takes so when you send it certified you can actually track it to see when they received it and then 35 days from now set a reminder in your phone to you know send my next letter or to look out for the investigation now once you receive the investigation Three things will happen. Listen to me. Three things will happen. The Some of your accounts will get removed. The credit bureaus will verif verify some of your accounts. Or the credit bureaus, Experience TransUnion, Equifax, will not respond to you, your dispute at all. All right? Now, if they don't respond to your dispute at all and you send the certified, 
hey, it's going to be, you know. But let's just say I'm assuming that they verifies your accounts. All right. The next thing you want to ask for is you want to request for a description of how they verify those accounts. All right. The reason why you want to request that is because technically they're supposed to give you the information on how they said everything was verified. Right. But if you look at Experian, if you look at TransUnion, if you look at Equifax and you just look at and you compare the first month to the new month, you're going to notice that they really didn't do nothing. They did, They really didn't update nothing. The payment history is the same. The um, open date, date last active, um, balance, some stuff is still going to be incomplete. Some stuff is still going to be inaccurate. And that's a violation because they're supposed to update it and modify and all those specific things. Okay. You're going to see all of that. But like I said before, even though you spot all those violations, they didn't do nothing nobody is holding them accountable so you can say all that you can say hey this 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 hey and they still will verify your accounts that's why i said the litigation process is the best because now you just got to hold them accountable so now what you want to do after you do that is when you send this letter in you want to collect all the accounts that were verified put that um account name and account number on there right now, once you put the account name and account number that was verified and you ask them to provide your description, now what's supposed to happen is wait 15 days from the time they received the letter. So make sure you send it certified and add two forms of identification. Very important, okay? Now, once you figure that out, um, not figure it out, once you send that and then you want to wait your 15 days. After you wait your 15 days, if they, they're, supposed, they're supposed to respond to you within 15 days, if they don't respond to you in 15 days, that's another violation, all right? So after that happens and they don't respond to you, then is when you want to file a complaint um, with the CFPB. I'm sorry. Then you want to complain, uh, file a complaint with the CFPB. And let me just walk you through that process of what it looks like. Here's what you want to do, all right? You want to go ahead and create an account with the CFPB. Now, if you don't have an account, um, just click on Google CFPB and then once you click click on it, it's going to tell you to put your name and information in. And once you're in there, verify your identity. I mean, verify your email. Verify your email. Once you verify your email, you're going to be in the back portal. And once you're in the back portal, all you're going to do is just click on start new dispute at the top right hand corner or left hand corner, I believe. And then now you're going to be on a screen that looks similar to this. Okay. Now, once you're on a screen that looks similar to this, now what you want to do is just click on credit report it and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Very important. Then click on credit reporting again now what's going to populate next is the type of complaint the problem that we're having okay so problem with companies investigation it's an existing problem all right this is the one that kind of we use a lot and the investigation did not fix an error on your report have you already tried to fix this problem yes you sent multiple letters did you request information you didn't request you just sent the letter telling them all right now, next, what you want to do is just paste typically what happens. Now, everybody's complaint is going to be a little bit different. The reason why is because your account name, whatever you're going through, the date, all that stuff is different. Your tracking number, all that's going to be different. All right. So you're just telling the credit bureaus, okay, I'm not going to read all of this, but I'm just going to read the first paragraph and go over the different laws that they violated. So I looked at my report back on January 19th, 2024. All right. So who are we talking to? First and foremost, are we talking to Experian? Are we talking to TransUnion? Are we talking to Equifax? You want to create three separate complaints. The reason why you want to create three separate complaints is because you have accounts on Experian that's only on Experian. You have accounts on TransUnion that's only on TransUnion. And you have accounts on Equifax that's that's only on Equifax, all right? So that's the reason why you want to have three separate complaints. All right, now, who are we talking to? And then all you're just saying is, I noticed some things um, are incomplete and not accurate. And according to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, whenever a consumer reporting agency prepares a consumer report, it shall follow reasonable procedure to assure maximum possible accuracy. You're going to hear this over and over because the truth is the truth, all right? And of the information concerning the individual about the whom, the whom the report relates, these accounts and the accounts that you're going to put are the accounts that are negative are all the accounts that's holding you back, all right? Just put an example, but if you have more, 
then go ahead and add more. They are not complete and accurate. I sent the letter asking them to make sure everything is complete and accurate. And here's my tracking number. And then you just want to put your tracking number. They sent me an investigation back saying everything is complete and accurate. But if you check my attachments, everything is not complete and not accurate. And according to this law, they are supposed to, like I told you for update, modify and or either delete the account. And they don't, they said they updated or they said they modified it, but what did they update or modify? They didn't give you the information of what they updated or modify. And if you look at both of your reports and see that they're still the same. So what did they really update and modify? And according to this law, um, you ask them to provide your description and they didn't do that. They didn't do that as well. And according to S-2, they're supposed to not furnish any information related to a consumer so any consumer reporting agent, if the person knows or has reasonable cause to believe that the information is inaccurate, all right? So what will be the fair resolution? So you just want to tell them to delete those accounts that you had listed up here, right? So does it take all those accounts, make a copy, and then actually paste, um, tell them to, to remove those accounts, all right? So... so delete these accounts okay that's your fair resolution and then now what you want to do is attach the the documents all right attach where it shows nothing's updated or attach where everything is still the same attach the letters that you sent attach all the things that you're doing using the cfpb let me make this clear using the cfpb isn't isn't a guarantee that the accounts will come off it's just another way for you to you know go back and forth with the credit bureaus all right but like i told you i'm gonna say this over and over and over only people that's gonna hold experience trading and equifax accountable is attorneys all right because they got the violations or debt collectors they got the violations all right you doing this isn't 100 guarantee that your accounts is gonna fall off it's just another way to get you know another process for you to get things removed from your credit report. All right, so I want to make this clear because just because you submit a complaint doesn't mean it's going to come off. But that's want to give you the information um, that we used um, before to help you get the results that you're looking for. Now, click on next. If you submitted your complaint, you need to wait about 15 days. The CFPB will respond back to you about 15 days telling you about your status. Now, Experian Trans Unit Equifax might ask you for an additional 60 days. It usually don't take 60 days. It takes about 30 days for them to respond back to you. So if you have any other questions or any other concerns, drop them in the comments. Thank you for watching and I really appreciate it.